What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter Parkour here at Sci-Fi on the Rock. It doesn't look like where I normally am, down by the plants. I'm in the deepest, darkest dungeons of... Actor Land! Of Actor Land with my, my new pal. I guess I can call you my pal. Yeah, you sure can, Peter. Yeah, yes, you can. David Nickel. And David Nickel is visiting us from uh, the other side of the planet, but he's also... About as far as you can fly in this country without leaving it. Right. Unfortunately, so <laughs> It's a long way to come. I mean, I fly to Europe a lot, and uh, this is basically halfway, and you're still losing your five, almost four and a half hours. Yeah, it's brutal. Coming it out it here. can be, for sure. It's one, if, if it's not going one way or the other, so you're gaining or losing, and you're just... You made Newfoundland too far away. Uh, well, I'm not even from here, so yeah, Newfoundland. You yeah, Newfoundland. Too far. <laughs> so, David, obviously, everyone knows why I'm here because I'm the I'm the famous YouTuber, and you're just this. You I know. know you're the famous YouTuber of, of. of Thank you very much for having me on, first of all. Oh no, well, thank you for taking the time to actually chat with me. Um, but you were just on these small shows like Stargate, Supernatural, yeah, Arrow, you're all these small yeah. things. Yeah, but um, but please. Wax melodic about yourself. Well, I don't know. You're asking an actor to talk about themselves. I don't. I don't know if we know how to do that. Yeah, I know. How much, uh, how much battery do I have? <laughs> yeah, how much battery do we have? Well, it's a real pleasure to be here. I mean, uh, I've been uh, doing conventions for a couple of years now, ever since uh, Stargate came along. Honestly, uh, it, it caught me off guard. I didn't know what conventions would be like when I first uh, started coming to them, and mm -hmm. I love them now. It, it's 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 a phenomenon that you don't see. I don't think in any other profession because you know, as actors, we go to our we go to our jobs. You go to the studio. You you you, you do the scenes. You do the show, and you go home and you wash the dishes. Right. There's no there's no feedback. There's no mm -hmm. sort of understand. There's no sort of reach of of, of what it is. So. Uh, coming out to these things has been uh, has, has been a real eye opener in terms of the work that you do as an actor actually goes out into the in, into the world. And I can uh, I, I can only imagine that really and truly, like you said, because I mean, like I'm I'm a uh, a child of the '90s, and as of that, I constantly crave validation. It's just one of those things. The type A's from from uh, from the '90s were the ones that were like, "Am I am I doing this right? Am I doing okay? You're doing fine. I just need you to say that I'm doing fine, Peter." Yep, you're doing fine. See, all I <laughs> works like it works like it works oh like. Oh my magic. god, that little dopamine and serotonin <laughs> bell just went. Bing. It's great. No, this is a, this yeah. is this is a lot of fun. I've been uh, I've been doing this since I was a kid. I've been I was a kid actor. I grew up through the theater. Most of the '90s uh, that you were uh, alluding to, I was in uh, Europe. I was in Prague, running a theater company there. Oh, cool! Uh, an English language theater company in the Czech Republic called Misery Loves Company. Uh, and with that was sort of when the first uh, production started coming out to the uh, Czech Republic in 95, 96. And that's when my first sort of bigger roles started happening okay. because there was no agency system or there was no casting in place in, uh, in the Czech Republic at the time. So um, uh, I got, as the artistic director of the, um, of the theater company, I got all the calls for, do you have any actors? You know, do we have any actors? Let me, it's me. It's me. Yeah. You want to hire me? You want me hire me? <laughs> Only me. Never mind that. No, no other actors. It's just me. Thank you very much. So uh, that's sort of where it started, and then uh, I met and married my wife currently, and uh, we moved to Vancouver, where I'm originally from, uh, uh, at the end of the decade in the, in, in the 90s. And shortly after that, it would have been 03 or 04 when Atlantis came calling. And it was a show that I wasn't uh, familiar with because it was, on, uh, it was on TV while I was in Europe. Oh, okay, uh, the yeah. whole Stargate phenomenon mm. kind of missed me, and uh, X-Files even too, which sort of put Vancouver on the map a lot. Right, yes. In terms of, yeah, of, of being a, uh, a Hollywood away camp, right? We're in the same time zone as L.A. Yeah. Uh, the dollar, the Canadian dollar is weaker so that they uh, they can come up in a two-hour flight. And, yes. Uh, and most of the, the money the, the money that's put into the project is on the screen. You can, you can see it there. That's what they like. That's why Vancouver started to grow, to explode as a film center in the in, in the 90s so at the end of that decade when i when i got in and uh, in, in 99 things were start already humming kind of kind of going fast yeah and so i got into stargate and i had no idea what i was in for um and kind of uh, like me now <laughs> you want to interview david nickel sure uh, okay <laughs> It's going, it's going great. It's going great so far. Um, so it was a, uh, it was a real eye opener to, to, to sort of to, to, to be introduced into the world of sci-fi, and it, ultimately the creativity and the awesomeness of the fans. It, it, it never fails to surprise me the the community that this engenders, mm -hmm. the the good that it does for people that uh, sometimes have social interaction 
issues or, or, or you know, on the spectrum or, or something like that, mm-hmm. they'll come to shows like this and, 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 and come out. So it is a massive phenomenon, a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, this is in Madrid, in Tel Aviv, yep. in, in, in all over the world. People watch, uh, people watch TV, Stargate, and they, they love the show. They respond to the characters. And that's, that's the part I love. I love and well, that's the thing. It's part of your legacy now. That's something that you'll be able to, you'll to, be able to talk about. That's and, a big and... word, legacy, yeah. But, I mean, it, it, right now, it's just kind of cool to meet the, right. the, the people. But I suppose, yeah, after a while, it, it, it does build it. And it, it, it's, it's, it's phenomenal because you're... You're in people's kitchens, in their bedrooms, in their living rooms every week. Yep. In a one-way mirror, you know. Mm-hmm. You don't know, you don't see them, but they see you, and they start getting a relationship with you. So when you come to places like this, you've never seen them before, and they go, "Hi, Dave. How are you?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Wow. I guess hi. <laughs> Who are you?" Nice. Yeah. Right. Um, so in terms of that, so like we've got a, a, the major part of your history and, and how you feel about all the projects that you've been working on for the most part, but like, what was it like, were you, were, did you just kind of fall into acting? Were you pushed into it? Was it just happened like that kid looks great? No, Put it on no, a newspaper. no, you know, it was a par- partially the environment uh, at home. I mean, uh, my, my parents were always sort of pro theater and, and, and pro the arts. They never really sort of insisted that I become a, uh, an accountant. Sometimes mm-hmm. I wish they did. Uh, sometimes no I no I don't I love this job are you kidding and uh, ultimately what I always think of is is that I was a I was a pretty curious kid and I loved doing lots of stuff and then I couldn't decide and I thought well if I'm an actor I can be all those things right I, I, I can be a spaceman I can be a Prince, I can be a whatever the different recent roles, mafia gangster, what, uh, what, whatever whatever the call sheet tells whatever you. Whatever the call sheet, day. whatever the call sheet tells you. Yeah, and then I studied at university, and uh, and that's sort of kind of how it came. And then you heard the story about how I started running the theater in Prague, and mm-hmm. because part of your blood at that point. It's like the stories that you hear about everyone. Like, like obviously you were part of Supernatural, so you hear about the stories of Jared Padalecki where he was behind the camera. And then he was like, well, uh, then he just basically, now it's a show that ran 15 seasons, so obviously eventually yeah. everyone's going to grow up. But then he started to direct a, a large number of episodes as yep. well. So you just kind of becomes part of you to the point of like, well, I was told what to do. Now I'm going to tell other people what to do for me. Well, you see the process and you see how it works on uh, on, on sets. And it's it, it, it's time consuming and it's arduous, but it uh, ultimately rewarding when you get good people to work with. And when you are in a situation like on Supernatural or on Stargate was, yeah. it's a group of people that have worked together for years, right. often 16 hours a day, 14 hours a day, 12 hours a day, you know, in the same in, in the same room. So you, you, you develop a language mm-hmm. and we called it a well-oiled machine when it was working. I mean, you, you come on some sets and it's a mess. And but Stargate, Supernatural, these shows that have been legacy shows that have been running for a while, it's just like slipping into a, a, a nice, you know, nice jacket. It's just a really right, nice... you just kind of slip into it. So yeah. I was, I was like, like the glove, the glove effect, the glove effect. Yeah. So when you're auditioning for a role, um, like what what is it that would actually draw you to a project? Is it like do you do you is it like I want to anything anything you can throw at me, you want to try, or do you challenge yourself to fill anything, or is it like you know I, today I want to be this? Yeah, no, it's not really that self driven. I mean, I. I get what my agent sends me, and my agent sort of sends whatever is is is, is going at the at, at the time. Um, obviously, the casting and the the agency sort of knows the type of person that you are, so they they start sort of sending you roles. That I mean, I get Eastern European a lot, right? I get the Russian guy on Arrow, Doctor Zelenka being the the, the, the Czech speaking one. So that that's that's kind of a niche. And, ah, your typecast. I see. Well, I, I, you notice I didn't use that word, uh, yeah. but there is there there is sort of a niche, a niche, or a forte, or what you're what you're what you're known for. Okay. So it's not like I can sort of uh, pick up the phone and go, "I want to do a cowboy movie," which I do. I'd love to be in a in a in a. See, did you guys hear that? This uh, is it. It's in YouTube now. So when it comes when it comes to you and you're and, and you're for this would be cool. This would be cool. And some things some things you're less enthusiastic about than uh, uh, than others. But at the end of the day, it chooses you. You don't choose it. Oh, I like that. Definitely. Oh, is that yeah. a soundbite? No, I, th- I think it is. That's a really good one, actually. Um, so, I mean, not, not to kind of sound, uh, pedantic or anything like that, but like, what has been your, like your top role? Like, we know that you've been in a ton of stuff. You've been in Stargate. You mentioned Supernatural, which was a, a shorter role than most. Uh, you were an arrow for, for, a, a, a large Five, part yeah. as well. Yeah. But like, has there been like one project where like, I will always pull on this 
as this was the most fun, this was the most interesting, this was the most rewarding? Well, two perspectives. One is what is famous, what you guys know, and, and two is what I've worked on and that you might not know about. Okay. So, for example, Stargate I loved because of this and mm. because of everything that I've described about the world that that, uh, that, that brings. And I do, I, did, I do like the character. It was really fun to do and it was a fun show uh, to work on. We had a levity. We had a sort of a sense of humor uh, about doing Stargate, which was uh, which was a lot of fun. Arrow later on was uh, a little bit more hard work. It wasn't it was a bit more professional. It wasn't so jokey and friendly because we had hard days, long days, two o'clock in the morning doing stunts and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. So favorite, it's like picking your kids. But there was a show that I did uh, last year in Europe, a spy series called uh, The Sleepers. And it's not okay. well known in, uh, in North America. It's on HBO or one of those uh, one of those things. The one of those streamers, yeah, one of those streamers. And that was a really fun one to work. I worked in uh, worked in Prague for most of the winter, uh, and that was that was that was a blast. So I really enjoyed uh, that one. And recently, I've been doing um, another show in Budapest, which has also been quite fun. So to pick a favorite is, is really hard because each one of them has a different flavor mm. and a different sort of aspect to them. I suppose the most famous one is uh, at this point is either Arrow or, 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 or Stargate that people okay. come back to. But they but they definitely seem that um, you, you seem to be, I know you're not going to bad mouth anything because you're clearly a professional, right? You can tell me later. Um, but uh, um, for the most part, you seem to be, uh, you find almost any role rewarding in some respect, which is, which is refreshing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not, I, I mean, um, I wonder. You're not. I'm, okay. I'm kind of, we'll no, pull I'm, that back. No, no, no. You don't have to. No, it's a good <laughs> question because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, would I ever turn it down if I, the, the thing is, is it's, you get cast and you don't know what it's going to be like. True. So then it ends up being great or horrible after <laughs> you get the work and then you go do it and you go, oh my God, that was brutal. Uh, uh, never going to do that again. But how would I have known back when I was asked whether I want to do this or, 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 or not? And uh, I'm not yet at the place where uh, I can sort of just give me that script, give me that script, done. give me give me that script done mm -hmm. and yeah, not have to. So, I mean, I have to be a little bit about what the market wants, what I can do and and, and, and what is uh, what is available. But there's certain tricks and there's obviously certain... Uh, um, trade or craft secrets that i've learned over the years that uh if it's a difficult situation how to deal with it and, okay and and, and how Dig to work deep and under how to the uh, how to work in those situations yes. yeah yeah so obviously we talk a lot about you um <laughs> but uh with you've obviously had very you, you shared the screen with a lot of people over the years um so again in terms of who has been your uh, again like i don't want to say that like your favorite because that almost seems like you want to put like one just the, this is my top, but like who's been like the, the, the people that have been the most fun to work with? I'll That's give you a couple. How about that? So sure. We don't go with favorite. I really enjoyed working with David Hewlett on uh, on Stargate. We had a really good sort of Mutt and Jeff routine. Okay. That was big fun to do. And uh, he's a great guy and he's uh, he's fun to work with despite what everybody says. <laughs> Hi, Dave. You're not going to watch this anyway. At least. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no, he might. He might. He might. Uh, uh, Stephen Amell in uh, on Arrow was uh, was was tremendous uh, professional. He had a lot of work to do. He had that was a that was a tough show for him. I can only imagine. I mean, physically he's, demanding yeah. and and the whole sort of street level crime fighting thing down it's and dirty, down and dirty in the puddles, uh, <laughs> literally. So that was really good. He was a bit of a partner in crime uh, in in terms of. Uh, working with that because we commiserated a lot and had tough scenes to uh, to do together, so that was fun. So he was really good. I worked with some names like you know like Shirley MacLaine. That was kind of uh, wow. fun back in the day. Uh, oh, wow. Who else? Uh, I don't want to name drop, but anyways, yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, you get your scene partner after you after you get the work and. Uh, some people are better than others. And some well, people are, are made for the the scenes, or, and and some people want to be there, and some don't. And you just have to yeah, work you, with that. You gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta kind of. It's not gonna cherry pick or anything like that. But so on a lot of the shows that you've been on uh, or have been a part of have been like I guess you could consider them like more action oriented shows instead of more like there's mm -hmm. drama and everything, but there's been a lot of action in Stargate. And again, I know I keep bringing back the, the three of of Supernatural as well as uh, uh, Arrow and whatnot. But like on Fringe and everything like that, that was a show that I used to watch, watch back in the day as well. Yeah, I'm on Fringe, yeah. And so, like, how do you like with any of these roles? Because again, I'm not familiar with everything. So this is this is why I say I saw the name David Nickel, and of course I have to interview them because that's what we do. But at the same time, 
in terms of recognizing how much action would you be involved with and how much like would you have been like okay i'm stepping back this is more stunt stuff is it again it doesn't work that way necessarily that you're gonna i mean most of the stuff on tv that is scripted uh in television falls into genres right like you'll okay. have the the hospital dramas mm -hmm. you have the sci-fi dramas you have the uh procedurals as they're called which are the cop shows okay uh the procedures to find the crime uh, that's why it's called they're, they're dun, called dun, 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 dun. exactly yeah. law and order is the most uh, famous one of those, but honestly, you know, you, you sit on a horse and it's it's a western. Uh, you're in a corridor with fluorescent tubes, and it's a sci-fi. Uh, you're in a courtroom and it's a legal drama. The environment and the context that you, as the audience, consumes it is different from where we work on it because we work on it from the inside, which is the scene. At the end of the day, it's it's just like me talking to you. Mm. If we were wearing cowboy hats and on horses, we'd be in a western, right? So this is the but we're still having role. but we're still having a conversation, right? So this so, is the newest role for you. Like I can't give you a screen credit for this. I'm uh, yeah, no, no, no. So yeah, interview YouTuber. That's what I am now. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber, yeah. and, like and then you. that's it. See? Just like you, I'm learning from the best. You're from I'm the, the I'm the relevant YouTuber at this point. Yeah, yeah, and I'm the I'm the I'm the YouTuber guest. So this is a good example. I I uh, don't know what a I've not been a YouTuber. Now that I'm a, a YouTuber, you can ask. I don't know what it's like to be a YouTuber. Well, at the end so, of this, you have to pay me. That's what it is. <laughs> that's oh, well, that's that's how it works. So it's the same kind of thing. Like if I'm doing if you're asking me about doing action, uh, I I don't look at the thing and I don't say to my agent, find me action roles or mm. get me. I I just do what the scene is if they hire me then that's what the, the the scene is over time i guess it builds up as portfolio or a legacy or whatever that those are the those are the shows they're doing and yeah it is yeah it's looking like action sci-fi yeah that's kind of i guess what we're doing more it's more what is being filmed in vancouver i think than uh me seeking anything out it's just what genre wise vancouver. it's local i want the local stuff perhaps okay fair enough so um, regarding that and everything that we talked about in the past and the stuff that you worked on, what's on the horizon for you? Can you talk about anything yes. that you're currently working on? Or is, it, is there, there Yeah, I do, have a, I do have one NDA that I'm under right now, and it's a big one. It's a Ooh. Turkish historical drama, and we were filming it in Budapest all winter long. I just Ooh. got back a, a, a month ago. Super hard, super cold, super challenging, and super, super fun. Um, all I can say is a Turkish historical drama. Cool. Yeah, yeah, super Again, cool. Again, niche, but like, you know. Yeah, like, super cool, super wild. It's about the Ottoman Empire. It's about the oh, 1700. Wow. And, and, and again, uh, the biggest thing where it's a job, it doesn't matter what I or anybody else here are interested in, you had fun doing it, so that's part of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So the uh, next time you come cast. here, and when I come out and I say, oh, I saw you, and then you go, oh, gasp, you did watch it. Yes, exactly, Perfect. exactly, Peter, exactly. So that's what's coming up. Uh, that'll be on one of the streamers, Disney Plus, I think it is. Very cool. So that's uh, uh, that's remember cool that now. Disney Plus Disney Plus and uh, that's a message to me to remember that. Uh, yeah, uh, and now word is that there's a writer's strike coming uh, oh. in uh, Los Angeles that is brewing and is supposed to start happening. I think in April or May, and that is going to take away quite a bit of work. There's an anticipation of being a big slowdown for this summer. So it um, mm -hmm. we'll see what we'll see what happens. That's unfortunate. Well, I usually uh, I, I end all of my uh, interviews with this uh, the same question. Everyone gets the same question. Okay. In the world of geek, in the world of sci-fi and, and nerddom and everything like that, is there anything on the horizon that you're interested in? Not necessarily a role, but is there any movies that uh, you may not be a part of that you're very uh, excited to see? Any video games if you're into that world? Uh, well, if this is the same category, I've heard rumors that Stargate is supposed to come back. Apparently, uh, Amazon bought uh, the Stargate franchise and and uh, there's there's been word of a re reboot, and it it's ripe for a re reboot, but it's been that rumor has been around for years and years and years. Okay. So I'll go with that. I'd love to go come back to uh, to, to Stargate if it if it comes back or if it's rebooted. All right. Well, so that, that now cool. we know that if at least if this if this video gets seen by any other executives, that at least you know. Yeah. I'm not saying he'll be on the show, but at least one of the originals is looking to see it come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, looking forward to it. Yes, absolutely. Well, David, I want to thank you for absolutely, like, so much for taking the time to oh, my pleasure. chat with me. Uh, because, uh, you know, Starstruck and everything like that. It's, it's very, very different to be kind of in this. I'm used to uh, uh, interviewing many of our, our local cosplayers and everything. So when I get a chance to interview anybody that's not 
Um, That's come from away. I know. He's a CFA for sure. Um, it's always. Oh, it's great. an abbreviation now. Well, yeah, that's that's. I'm a CFA. That's it. I was told that many, many, many moons ago that I'm a CFA, and I was like, "Is that a good?" Thing? How long do you have to be here to not be a CFA? Uh, well, I've been here about 23, 24 years. I got a ways to go. Yeah. Well, I know. I think technically, I think I think all you have to do is kiss the cod, and then I don't think you're a CFA. Oh, that anymore. happens. That happened ten years ago. So. Oh, there you're not a CFA. You're done. You're good. You're a local. You just gotta start wearing the hat. So I appreciate you so much for doing this with us. Uh, again, I'm Peter Parkour of the Destroyed Theorist here with David Nickel of many Stargate, Supernatural, Fringe, Arrow, Fame, and all that stuff. Uh, again, I cannot thank you much. Uh, My pleasure enough for doing this. My pleasure, Peter. Thanks. Um, so as uh, from here to uh, Sci-Fi on the Rock 2023 here at the Sheraton Hotel in Newfoundland, I'm Peter Parkour of the Destroyed Theorist. And like we always say around here, keep it real. Keep it real, guys.